Hello and welcome back, this is ProTelDev back with another Dungeon Architect video and this time we're going to be looking at the levels that I've created and kind of where I am right now. So there's a little bit of a break um, between this video and the last video coming out and um, that's partly because I was, uh, I'd spent so much time working on the levels and it's, it's been taking a little bit of time to get through them as well as making new objectives and stuff so uh, I'm going to be focusing on those levels really, uh, they're the main thing that I've done, so there's not been a whole lot of extra things, but I'll go over the small things first, there hasn't been a lot, but I'll go over them, uh, the few that I've got, but before we do any of that, let's look at this, so um, you can do, you can see our to-do list, which is the things that we completed, uh, we've got this whole section right here, we've got quite a lot of this now completed as well, uh, these uh, yellow ones are just things that I'm working on currently, so a dialogue for the end, uh, for the start of a level, as well as some of the dungeon customization, which actually this is finished now pretty much, so I'll, I can tie this off right now. Um, and then the objective system I'm just doing for the last couple levels. Also the menu levels um, also automatically um, are set up now. So whenever I create a new level it automatically sets up based on the build index. And it's all working. The only thing that needs doing really is still the dungeon but I'm doing that after I've done the levels because it's kind of a separate thing. It's almost like a separate game um, and it's not really tied to levels uh, directly. So I can work on that separately later. Okay, so to start off with, let's look at some of the things that I've done. So, first of all, I've if we go to the top of the objectives, um, compared to last time, uh, I've removed the maximum integer um, and its save data. So, essentially, uh, we had a maximum integer that would be saved as well as our normal integers for our current um, counts. Um, our maximum would be saved um, and then transferred. Instead, what I've done is I found that it would just be easier to kind of... Um, just put it into the objective mission um, stage that gets called right here for example um, that gets called to, uh, depending on the level that is active and then all I have to do is just set the maximum amount before we call the objective related stuff and the text and things I could just do it in here individually as opposed to saving the data and having to reload it um, it's just a bit more performance wise it's just a little bit better um, on, in terms of the loading aspect. So the next thing is that as you can see right here we've got um, our different objectives. Now this is all I've done so far. We've got the tutorial, mission 1, mission 2 and mission 3. Um, then we're going to have a couple more missions as well so 4, 5, 6 and pro uh, probably a 7th potential. Um, the sandbox isn't going to have any missions. Um, it's just whatever you want to do. But as you can see this is what we got so far, we've got the standard uh, tutorial ones which is set up right here. A couple of changes so that we can set things um, correctly, like the colour for example this has been altered slightly. Um, and some of these have been altered to be a little bit more better. But we've also got our first mission right here which is our village builder, um, our missions that state specifically that kind of carry out with the theme of the island a little bit and kind of go over those kind of difficulties. Uh, we also do have, a, a, our expansions do have a specific cost now so if I go into our um, our adventure guild right here, uh, you can see that unlocking our, our island requires money so it requires 100 gold, 200 gold, 300 gold and the fourth island requires 400 gold. Um, that's also seen in the um, UI as well. Another thing to mention is that the happiness will increase or decrease uh, depending on production as opposed to rating. Before I take rating away, previously when I added a production building it would take some rating away. If I got rid of the building it would increase rating. Um, what I've done instead is I've made it so that it affects happiness and this kind of plays into the disaster as well. Uh, that's related to anti-production and this just makes rating a lot easier to manage um, while having lots of production it's very very frustrating to have to need lots of production for later stuff but not be able to do it because of rating um, the next thing is that I'm going to show in here is that we have a bunch of tips I said that these would be done um, and now they are so you see we got a bunch of tips I've done it in the same way we've done it in Turtle Trial and you can see it right here um, we got a bunch of them related to our game uh, that'll help out the player when they're loading in. Now the next thing you're going to notice is that um, there's a lot more detail on the rock and lots of different textures have more detail in general just to make things look a little bit more sharper. Um, I can show that straight away in the tutorial actually because 
um, it should look different. Uh, well, it will look different. You see that it's very, very slight, but we've got some detail right here on the rock, especially, and some of the ground. Uh, we got the these rocks are a little bit more shinier, the stone. Um, so just in general, a little bit more extra detail onto the grass as well and the dirt. Um, so just that little bit of extra. If I just, for example, get rid of some of this. Um, you can see a little bit more detail into the ground, which is going to be really nice to play, as opposed to before, which was a little bit more simple. Okay, so that's really every th all of the small things I've done. Apart from that, it's now onto the islands. Now, to talk about each island first, I need to go over the general premise of them and kind of the challenge. Um, I kept it very basic. The tutorial you just saw, it's just very much a one layered island. Um, so I won't go over the tutorial, you've seen it quite a lot throughout the development of the game. What I am going to go over now is the other islands. So first of all, we have after the starting isle, we have the lush isle. Now the description isn't done, the image isn't done, the, the text isn't done. Um, however, as you can see, we've got an icon right here, which means it's been completed. Now, the only way, the reason I complete an island is if it's absolutely doable and if it's got no changes needed, then I will purposely complete the island, uh, that island, and so that's what you can see the mark right here. So, if we go into the lush one, uh, let's make sure we delete it. I don't want to give any uh, ways of being able to complete it, like any hints. So, let's just load this up. You can see our little tip right here. The inspection button on the manager bar will allow the generation of materials and building types to be seen uh, visually. Uh, that's just one of those things. So as this loads up, you can see our island right here. This is the Lush Island. Uh, the Lush Island what, uh, the, is primarily made from um, perma, perma air forests, so things you can't destroy. And it's got a lot of uh, trees. It's very, very, as the name would uh, state, it's the Lush Island. Um, and it's going to have the biggest problem for this is actually building around and through these um, these trees and islands. Relatively simple though. It's going to be straightforward. Uh, it's going to give you a lot of room and it's going to give you a lot of money to delete. You do start off with 30 gold as well, which is very nice. And you do have a dungeon as well to start off with. So quite a lot of room here. Quite simple, but you should. There are some slight uh, difficulties, like the environment building around it, and uh, things like. And the bigger challenge is actually doing the objectives. Some of them are more tricker. You do also start off with a high rating, so you're going to get a lot of people coming in very, very early. So let's go back now. So next thing is High Point Isle. Uh, so this is actually going to be more rocker. Um, so this island is going to be more vertical, more rocker. It's going to have limited area of building. Let's go into it. Um, see, we got another object, uh, another tip right here. Happiness will drop continuously if water and food reaches zero. Keep above five water and food resource to increase happiness. Um, now immediately you can see this kind of environment that we have, it's much more uh, vertical, it's going to take a little bit to build to, to get to some of the bigger areas, and um, expansions are actually going to be very, very important, so I think, believe we have two expansions that we can do, um, so it's going to be really important to get those to, in order to complete the objectives. Um, as you can see right here, we do have our dungeon, and we have a very, very limited area in the very beginning. So yeah, that's going to be the big challenge for this one, is trying to build to these bigger areas and to get the expansions. You do have a small little area here, and this is just enough to really give you the very basics. Okay, so the next one. Okay, so the next one is the broken. Now, I'm not going to show any objectives. Um, I'm trying to keep the objectives away just to give you um, more of a chance of being able to complete it. I might very well do like a little mini walkthrough series on this. Uh, way after release, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it up to uh, you viewers to be able to complete it. So, here we go the Broken Isle. So, uh, only one type of potion can be equipped for expeditions in each slot, however, up to five potions can be consumed for that slot. Um, so, this one is going to be more or less broken up little islands, it's gonna be very, very flat as you can see right here, but a lot of areas to build on. Um, the objectives is only one objective, so I will show this because I've shown the one object, the first objectives on the others. This one is going to be very, very tough. The reason for that is because every time you take away a scenery in order to get money to help you in the beginning, you end up going into minus for your basic scenery. So you're going to have to replace that and build up. 
Um, it's going to be very, very difficult. I have managed to do it with, with, and complete all these objectives, though, uh, in one sitting and in about an hour or less. Um, so it is absolutely doable to get these, uh, but you will need it probably the first expansion at least. So that's just a little hint to you. So as you can see, it's just small islands. You have the very bottom right here. And in order to really use up all this area, you're going to have to find a way to build all the way up here. Um, so it's going to take a little while, but I believe you can do it. So that's the islands that I've got so far. Uh, some very basic islands. Uh, the next island that I'm going to be doing is the Lost Island. It's going to be a lot bigger. It's going to be multi-layered. Um, so, um, and I'm not going to show it because it's going to take a little bit of time to carry on building it. I've started it, but it's not done yet. Um, and we also have the uh, the final island or the second to last island, the Challenger. Uh, followed by maybe two uh, sandbox levels. So that's what we got so far. Um, ultimately, I may have a break again for the following week. Um, it depends. Um, essentially, I'm just working on these islands. It's taking me a lot of time and the objectives. But once they're done, I'll do a video probably showing what the final islands look like. Um, and showing, and then I think we'll be almost done. Hopefully, there'll be only maybe two more videos for this series, potentially. Um, I'll be looking at a lot of the cleaning and performance related stuff as well for this right here. So I'll be working on this, getting it ready to release. But for now, I'll carry on working on the levels. So this has been ProTelDev, and I'll see you next time.